Hi, this is Brittany Hall, a program coordinator at Yukon Solid Ground. And today we are at Field Engineer Farm talking about farm hacks. So Jason, can you tell me about your farm and where folks can find your products? Yeah, Field Engineer Farm, we're located in Columbia, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. um, I'm farming on about two cultivated acres. Um, my products can be found at the uh, Andover Farmer's Market, mm -hmm. um, which is uh, one Wednesday a month and every week at the Saturday Willie Farmer's Market um, from 8 to 12. Okay. I also do a, very, a small CSA, mm -hmm. about 18 members. So we're talking about farm hacks. Can you tell us a bit about what you built and the reason why you ended up building it? Yeah, so what happened was um, back during COVID, um, Johnny's had a dibble for leeks, for planting leeks specifically, mm -hmm. and um, they sold out and they weren't restocking anytime quickly. So mm -hmm. I decided that I was going to make my own dibble um, so that I could plant leeks, and then it sort of adapted from there and it became um, my garlic dibble mm -hmm. and my onion block dibble and my broccoli block dibble. Yeah. So. This particular idea, did you come up with it on your own or was it kind of based loosely on something else? It was based loosely on the on Johnny's original leek dibble, okay. um, which didn't have any adjustability at all. Mm -hmm. The dibbles were locked and they were welded in place. Okay. And um, I mean, they were about the same length as the dibbles I have, mm -hmm. but, um, but, but there was less adjustability in it. Yeah, and so what did you use to make it? So, I, so I broke a broad fork, yeah. which is how I ended up with the handles. Um, and I really wanted to reuse the handles because Johnny's does have nice handles yeah. on their broad forks. And then I, um, the original design was two pieces of tubing that were bolted together. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like that because um, it was kind of flimsy. Yeah. So I ended up taking, um, I, I sourced, this type of tubing that Johnny steel tubing that Johnny's would have used um, for their wood posts, mm -hmm. and then a piece of um, of smaller, thinner uh, tubing for the the connecting piece in between the two sockets. And I, I sourced all that from a company called McMaster Car. Mm -hmm. um, they're an online okay. catalog uh, for industrial parts and okay. And so you're able to kind of find yeah, everything you yes, needed on there. Yeah, yeah, including right down to the bolts and, and some of the aluminum that I used for the actual oh. dibbles as okay. well. So is this design we're seeing now what it originally looked like, or have you made any changes since you first made it? I have made some changes. Mm -hmm. uh, originally, it was it was uh, like I said, it was two pieces of um, tubing that mm -hmm. were bolted around the wood handles and and that made up the gaps for the slots as well um, which uh, as I said before it was really it was kind of flimsy and mm -hmm. so I never I didn't really it wasn't sturdy enough to really jab into the ground yeah. and so I, I I knew at some point that I would weld it and so I I think I just finished welding it um, right before I planted <laughs> onions this, this year so yeah. do you have an idea of how much it costs it was not very expensive it was probably under sixty dollars to make all this mm -hmm. Can you just run through all of the different parts that you have here, just what you made them out of, so that we kind of have an idea of yeah. what they all are? So these two sockets are made mm -hmm. from a, I cut a one foot piece of one and a half by one and a half steel tubing, yep. eighth inch thick. This was a piece of one by one and a half, mm -hmm. same wall thickness, eighth inch thick wall thickness. Um, that was, I think that was 36 inches. I had to cut that to, okay. it's 28 right now. Mm -hmm. I'm on 30 inch beds yeah. and so I didn't think that you would ever need you would ever you would never find yourself in a situation where you're planting on the last inch on either side of the bed so I yeah. was safe I felt fairly safe mm -hmm. making it 28 inches the different blocks so some of them are out of aluminum because mm -hmm. I didn't want to have to haul that much weight up and down yeah. uh, over and over but like the deep ones mm -hmm. like this is a four inch one for the yeah. garlic and then this is a nine inch one for the leeks yeah. these are made out of steel because I didn't want there to be any um, doubt that these would go in straight and, yeah. and not get bent or something like yeah. that. I cut this off, a, off the chunk that was left over from this because yeah. sometimes what happens, which I assume can happen with any dibble, mm -hmm. is that the soil collapses back in on the hole, especially yeah. with the leaks. So I, after I go through and basically mark them out, if mm -hmm. they're not deep enough, mm -hmm. I sometimes have to go through and, oh, and singular almost... punch them to make the hole, 
to form the hole up correctly. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that matters to you or not, but yeah. But so you just you essentially I made yourself like a, a like handheld, a handheld dibble. dibble, but but one that accepts the bolt that I use. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know if you. I f had thought about putting just one marker at mm -hmm. the back, but then. It would be too easy to get off as you went down the bed, so mm -hmm. I decided to make two markers, and originally I was only gonna have them be at six inches, yeah. but there were instances where I needed, like onions, say, yeah. I plant them 12 inches between blocks, mm -hmm. and so I decided to make a hole at six inches from, mm -hmm. from this point and a hole at 12 inches from, okay. from this point. So that's kind of how I came to that um, decision. Mm -hmm. I wanted this to be something that if you broke something on it, mm -hmm. you could find the materials or the parts that you wanted yeah. easily and not have to spend days or weeks of downtime in case yeah. it happened while you were in the middle of something. Yeah. Can you just walk me through how you put this together? Okay, so the first piece, this uh, sort of U-shaped piece, I, I, had to, I had to cut the ends. I believe I did that with a Sawzall blade. Mm -hmm. I drilled the holes next, mm -hmm. and I ended up drilling uh, five holes. So one, two for each slot. Okay. Um, and then to connect the holes with the slot, I just took a um, cutoff wheel on a, a like a die grinder, mm -hmm. um, and that's how I did that. Yeah. After those were cut, because it's, and I know this because I I didn't do it quite this way. Um, I welded one side and then I went back to do the, mm -hmm. that and that was really hard to get the die grinder in there. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So, so cut the holes and <laughs> drill the holes and cut the slots first. Yeah. And then you can go back and um, the way I got 90 degree angles um, to the best of my ability was using this um, 4590 magnet. It's a welding magnet. Mm -hmm. I made four welds. Mm -hmm. The order in which you weld is a little bit critical because as you add heat to certain parts, it will pull it mm -hmm. or push it to a certain direction. So I think I welded the inside corner first and then I went to the to the outside corner so it mm -hmm. pulled it back. And then these are such short welds that it almost doesn't matter. You're not yeah. adding that much heat to it. So, um, Do you have an idea of how long it took you to make this? So um, without the dibbles, it just the U shape, mm -hmm. it probably only took me a couple hours to do that, to cut okay. it and weld it. Um, but with the dibbles, it was it was more like an eight hour work okay. day, um, be, just because there's so many setups with the dibbles. Yeah. And so what about, is there anything you would do differently in the future or that you would have done differently? Yeah, so back? one of the changes that I wanna make kind of immediately for, um, I think I said planting broccoli or even cabbage blocks, yeah. is to um, take these posts out and drill them out to accept the, the larger half inch bolt that mm -hmm. goes there so I can, so I, that I can stagger the blocks yeah. so that I can stagger plant the, um, the, instead the broccoli in instead of just in a, a, mm -hmm. a, a row, I guess. One of the other changes, um, we were talking earlier, I, I wouldn't make these round because I don't like the, there's two reasons. It's hard to make them round without a lathe. Mm -hmm. And so if you had to make them, if I had to make them again right now, mm -hmm. I could cut four angles on them and yeah. make them kind of still come to a point. Yeah. But I could do that with a, a bandsaw, exactly. a portable bandsaw, or um, or even a cutoff wheel if I really mm -hmm. had to. So there's two reasons there. Mm -hmm. You know, one ease of manufacturing or fabricating, and then the other thing is the soil blocks never really set right down into the soil. Yeah. I'd always have to go back through and sort of still push the soil aside to, to set Stick the block in, yeah. in there. Do you have any advice for other farmers who are trying to either put together something like this or really DIY anything on their farm? I think that when you're DIYing something, you should really, you, you should consider looking at other designs first. When you're looking at a problem, you're, you're probably looking at something that already exists and you're trying to make it better. Mm -hmm. That's generally, I generally think that you should start looking for something first and then adapt it. Yeah. And as you adapt it, you'll find what works for you. Do you have any future big DIY, small DIY projects planned for the farm? Um, yeah, I'm in the middle of one right now. There's pieces of it over there, yeah. but um, it's a it's a chicken coop on old uh, hay wagon running gear mm. that I'm actively trying to get up before I have some new hens moving into it. So <laughs> there is a little bit of a time crunch on it, but yeah. that's, that's really the only other DIY project I have uh, on the docket right now. Well, thank you so much for having us and showing us the dipple that you made.